Do you do your own stunts on that opening? Uh, yes, or was I that do. I was just thinking, man. I hope that's the way everybody will remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, those three, those three people you ran down while you were uh, making that sequence. Especially that old lady <laughs> cussed us out so bad, and that's true, folks. We'll probably remember us for all mm, time. It's mm, true. Mm. Mm. Oh, she was angry. Yes, she was. But uh, fortunately, we uh, soothed her soul. Uh, yes, we did. We uh, hope, anyway. With that bottle of Maisola. <laughs> <laughs> we poured down her throat <laughs> while she was foul-mouthing us so badly. We got a lot of mail. Yes, mail we do. Mail is just pouring in. Well, I wouldn't say pouring, but here it is. Gentlemen, will you please send me the recipes from Program 610? That's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy your program, even if you are a couple of clowns. Norma Hill, <laughs> Blackfoot, Idaho. Norma, Norma hi. be glad you're in Idaho because we might, otherwise, we might come out there and get you for calling us. No, we're glad to be called a couple of clowns. That's what we are. Too many people in this world today taking everything too seriously. M Millie Gibbs. I saw you out just the other night uh, with a rubber nose on. <laughs> Millie Gibbs of Havana, Florida. Mm, oh, yeah. Havana, Florida. Havana, Florida. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Wrote to Dear Larry and Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Billy. <laughs> Is that it? You're not yeah, going to read it? No, I, I mean, it's. <laughs> she said we're great to listen to, and uh, that we're great to listen to on TV. <laughs> you know, now I know. Listen to on TV. She got one of those radios like you have in your bathroom. You yeah. listen to the television. Dicey Kirk also is in on the Let's Call Them Something hotline. Is that? She's a... from Barbersville, West Virginia. Dicey. Dicey. Mm, uh -huh. I like that. She says, I love you two nuts. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, I guess I'm a walnut and, and blast a pecan. A hazelnut, yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work and don't worry. You're much neater than the frugal gourmet. <laughs> yes, but the frugal old frug makes a lot more money than we do. That's all right. But that's all right. We have more fun than he does. Mrs. Have Phoebe. Have you noticed that he's not so frugal anymore? Well, neither are we. I mean, we did well, veal last yeah, week. Yeah, but I mean, we're not using $15 bottles of wine either. I mean, we're not cooking with Ripple yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's an idea, cooking with Ripple. <laughs> that was from Mrs. Phoebe Byington of Nicholsville, Virginia. Uh-huh. And this is from Mary Tanner and Tom Green out in Odessa, Texas. Odessa, Texas. Uh -huh. And uh, they say, hi, fellas. I have only seen your program the last two weeks. Didn't know such a great show was on TV. That is my loss. I thoroughly enjoy what I saw. If you ever tire of being gourmet cooks, you can become another Bob and Ray with an easy transition. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. That's a real compliment. And they want to know how can they apply for the job of pan washer on the show. <laughs> well, it's very simple. You just write to pan washing care of. David Ureno, our director, here at the station, and the address will be up at the end, and uh, they'll be glad to uh, take your application, and we are an equal opportunity employer. Uh, I, I might add that toward the end of the program, I will be giving out Dave's personal home <laughs> phone number and address, and right. you're invited to a party this weekend. <laughs> Uh, free beverages and everything you can eat at Dave's house. Uh -huh. Dear Laban and Larry, I enjoy he's your show. He's celebrating, you know. He's <laughs> gotten a little promotion. Right. And we we'll just bring can't that address up. Right. <laughs> I enjoy your show every Saturday on Channel 51 out of Harrisonburg. That's my home neck of the woods up there. Mm -hmm. Glad you finally have sharp knives, and I'm also of your school of cookery. If it's good, you can put your finger in it. School. <laughs> <laughs> well, the staff like that one. Keep up the great work and don't let those old fuddy duddies with clean fetishes get you down. <laughs> I'd like a copy of your Chinese recipe from show 607. You went too fast for me again, but that's okay. I'm just slow. I hope your dishwasher, some young lad, got all those dishes clean. That way, see a lot of people pay attention yeah. to those little credits that roll yeah. up at the end, thanks to the cleverness of the staff. And now Dave's number uh, and uh, home address <laughs> will be coming up a little bit later on. Liz Riffey, thank you very much. And well, uh, Mrs. Paul Ashby wrote a nice little letter, <laughs> and she ended with this cryptic remark. She said, please. Don't burn your fingers while on TV. Oh, well, that's very <laughs> It's important. okay if we do it while we're at home, but just don't do it in front of 10 million Americans. That's right. So there. Now, off to the kitchen we go. You going to go first or am oh, I? Oh, I, well, I, let me show everybody what I'm doing. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm frying up some bacon. Uh, I'm oh. doing a, 
we're, this is a party <laughs> show. This is some of the food that you'll have at Dave's house this weekend. This weekend. Some cheap food. <laughs> that num number and, and address uh, will be coming right. up shortly. So. And uh, so I'm doing a cheap party dish that was sent in by Patricia Alvarez of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thank you, Patricia. We appreciate it. And we're just real anxious to get our lips on it. And uh, Bly is What's doing the, the, the dip. Oh, okay. Oh, all and, right. And um, so in order to flavor the dip, we can either put green onions or bacon in it as we make it. And I'm going to put both. So uh, I'm frying up some fine bacon from uh, our underwriter, the Valleydale Company. Oh, wonderful. And so, Bly, if you want to go ahead and I'll continue and do what? to fry. Well, first of all, the uh, silly... Uh, toy of the day. I forget what this is called. What's this called? Anybody know? Looks like an egg. No. <laughs> a, hopper. a hopper. It's called a hopper. It looks like a little portion of an egg or something. It's real bizarre, see? And you take it. Looks like the thing Granddad used to have on the bottom of his cane. <laughs> and you turn it inside out, and then you drop it. <laughs> it pops right up. That's amazing. It usually pops up farther than that. <laughs> that looks like an appliance for a frog. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. The very lovely and semi-voluptuous Michael, uh, right. the sound man, <laughs> provided us with that. <laughs> I just Little wish Mikey all of you could be here to, to enjoy our crew as Little much Mikey as we Carroll. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do potato crisps. <laughs> what? Now what I did was, it, are these things, no, no, cr crisps. Oh. See, that's the oh, way you say oh. it. These, these big gnarly potatoes were baked yesterday the Are they old Idaho's? fashioned way. They're just bacon potatoes. Oh. And these are, to put them on a, a That's greased. That's one of the biggest potato I have ever seen. Is it? Yeah. That's well, a large potato. They're all right large. They're really You know where they right came large. from, don't you? Where? South America. How do, Peru. How do you know that? I studied up on it. I try to study up on recipes. Before How can it be show. Idaho potatoes if they're from well, Peru? Well, that's where they're grown now, but originally they all came from Peru. Can they still call them Idaho potatoes? Sure, they can. Call them Mary if they want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. But uh, <laughs> most of the potatoes came from Peru, and they're just thousands of varieties, and they're all different colors mm -hmm. and shapes. Yeah. Well, what Even we did today is we started. You don't want to hear about the history of the potato. Oh, oh well, do you? go ahead. I, I, I don't, I'm just so offended here. I studied, spent hours and hours want to interrupt reading you. up on green potatoes and pink ones and yellow ones and all that stuff. And what you else don't, do you know? Well, that's enough, I guess. Did the Irish potatoes come from Peru? Did the Yeah, all potatoes everywhere came in from the world Peru? came from Peru, from South America. So the Irish really didn't have. No, they the, imported them as a cheap food. The lock on the the potatoes. And then they got a blight on them and that's how my great grandfather came to this country. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he had to leave Ireland. They couldn't eat. They were starving. So he had a blight America. on him. <laughs> <laughs> this is a blight three generations hence. <laughs> All right. Now what we do is we start out with four baking potatoes and get large ones because you're going to cut these up in a little bit anyway. So the larger they are, the more outside area you have to work with. Now what you do is you just take these taters and make sure they're nice and clean on the outside. And I took just a little Crisco and just sort of greased them up on the outside. And I put them on a flat baking pan, put them in the <laughs> oven for one hour. And you could put them right on the rack, couldn't you? Oh yeah, you could yeah. put them right on the rack. And don't put them in foil, just bake them. But now make sure you stick a little hole in them because them things <laughs> will swell up yeah. like Johnson. And pow! They will literally explode. Yeah, and that's how you tell if they're done. You can put a, a like a, a cake tester or a toothpick down in them, and if you can push it in, they're done. If you can't, they're still partially raw, uncooked on the inside. Hmm. I didn't know that. Anyway, I left them in for an hour. Everybody always talks about the fact that potato, you know, cooking potatoes takes too long. It doesn't. It only takes one hour for these great big potatoes. Or you now, can do them in the microwave, but they're better when you do it like that's that. That's right. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this thing. We're going to open him up. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I remember when you were a surgeon. We're going to open him up. Oh. I guess now you're going to tell us you're going to put in a pacemaker. <laughs> it won't open. Would, th would this Hello, be Mr. Johnson. <laughs> oh, Mr. Potato. Hello. <laughs> Could you put a hot dog in that? Oh, it's got a... Oh, it has a bad <laughs> spot inside of it. Well, How that's horrible. Right. Just scoop it out and throw well, it out. Yeah, we're going to scoop that out anyway. Let me just scoop that out. Now, what I'm going to do, 
hold on to this the insides because you can use it for other things hold on later to your on. Insides. Hold on to the inside. <laughs> now we're going to scoop that out with a spoon and get it back pretty far. You don't have to get it perfect. I mean, no one's going to grade you on this thing. Well, unless I come to your house. Well, sounds like I'm going to be graded on here, or, but anyway. Or Miss Carol. You know, you can do with this stuff later on. You can throw some butter in there and a little milk, put that on top of the stove, heat it up. Mm, mm, mm. A little salt and pepper on it. Real good. Maybe a little nutmeg. Yeah, do all kinds of stuff with those innards. I have just left a little bit of that. As you can see, that's just, looks like an old moccasin, doesn't it? Holy moly. Now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scoop out all four of those in a couple of minutes. We'll come back to me and do some more. And by the way, while I'm doing that, I'm also heating up some margarine on top of the stove because we're going to dab a little margarine, dab a little margarine on the outside. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, there we go. So I'm just going to keep on scooping this stuff out. Okay. Now back to well, Mr. You do it real well. And my bacon is just cooking and frying real fine and I'm going to chop up some green onions which thank goodness we can get all the time now in the grocery store. And why is that? Because they they can grow them in hot houses or import them out now, of... Now are they growing those in Peru also or? Well they can grow them anywhere in South America. Is that a Peruvian onion? onion? Because you know down in South America they're, it's right in the middle of their summer now. Now I'm opening up another one. This is so exciting. What What are you doing, an autopsy on that? I'm opening another one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say down there, isn't it? Never mind. And so these uh, green onions, and you just slice them up thinly and put some of the tops in them. The only thing you need to do is make sure you wash them real good. And for those of you that are surprised, yes, folks, I even wash the scallions to make sure that they're completely clean. Now this recipe is real easy to do and real short and you can do it in your food processor or your blender and we're going to be doing it in our cheap blender. Oh no, do we have to gear that thing up again today? Yep, I just love doing it. And I guess I've got pretty much down here, it's the, the green tops of the onions that really have a good onion flavor to them. You know, you have no idea how much innards there are to a potato until you start uh -huh. scooping it out. Well, I you have, know what else you could do with that? You could chop that up and make a little potato salad out of it, too. Or if you had a couple of potato shells, which you can have laying around, or, or well, I mean, you have these, but you're going to be using them for something else, you could stuff this stuff back into them again. But you can't this one because we're going to do something else mm -hmm. with, with the skin. Well, in any event, if I ever you get... You could even mute, mash these things if you wanted to. You could probably get by with that. I'm turning my bacon over, <laughs> which is always a thrill. All right, now... This looks like in, a little papoose, doesn't it? <laughs> now, I believe that, it. That it, looks like the daughter of Sacagawea. <laughs> it looks like someone works out in the front. Well, no, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, here's the, uh, there we go, the blender. <laughs> Here is a small eight ounce container of cottage cheese. Well, small most, curd, most eight ounce fat. Uh, containers are small. Well, I swear. <laughs> and Sounds the same a little repetitious thing, to me. an eight ounce container, and I hope I can remember to keep this one because I got to throw the bacon grease in it, a plain yogurt. This would not be good with your blueberry. Matter of fact, this would probably be right nasty with blueberry. Probably gonna be right nasty with that. <laughs> well now, wait a minute. Don't, <laughs> don't be throwing off on this lady's dip yet. Oh, oh okay. Not and I we try. need a, a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Uh, that uh, <clears throat> bacon is popping all over me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and a half a teaspoon of onion it salt. Is. It's popping all over me. And there we go. That's the onion salt goes in there. And a dash of hot sauce. Now let me shake it up here a little bit. 
They tell me that they grow a lot of Tabasco down in Peru. Uh, oh, yes, they do. That's one of the major, major products down there. Oh, I need that much time to do what I got to do. Now, let me see. Let me, now I'm going to crumble up four or five pieces of bacon down in here. Now, while you're doing that, just over here real quickly, what I'm doing is I'm I'm cutting these skins into nice long little strips. You may want to see. I'm just cutting them into little strips now, lengthwise. In a couple of minutes, we're going to dredge those through a little margarine, and we're going to put them just on a a plain old pie pan or an old pan and with a little salt and pepper and a margarine. We're going to put them under the broiler and we're going to broil them for approximately 10 minutes. Actually seven and a half or eight minutes. All right, Laban. Or the time remaining, as they say in That's the wrestling right. matches. Or TV time remaining. Now I'm putting in some green onions into this dip. Now let me check my bacon out. <laughs> Back, you huskies. <laughs> That bacon there was joined at the hip. <laughs> it was. I don't know what was wrong with that bacon, but it had got stuck to the, it just fried itself together. Let me flip this bacon over here so that. I'm dipping these little pieces now in the margarine, which I had melting on the stove. Margarine melting on, on an open, open stove. stove. So anyway. All right, now. Well, I want to tell you, that stuff is just... Oh, Lord, I knew it. <laughs> Doesn't sound so good, Johnson. Now I'm salting and peppering these things, and I'm going to put them this, under the broiler. This blender don't favor nobody. Oh! Let me try it again, see if I can get it. Oh, there it goes. It's doing it. So exciting. It really is. Oh, it's so pretty and it has this lovely green consistency to it. <laughs> <laughs> it does have a right uh, strange look to it. Gee, I hope this is going to be good. I'm now moving a little faster on the potato peels than I was previously. Caught me again. Hoping, of course, that some of them will get done in time for the end of this program. Put a little salt and pepper, sprinkle a little salt and pepper on that. There you go, a little salt and hey, pepper. Blah. And put it under the broiler until they get crisp, about 10 minutes. Look real pretty, they'll be real nice. Whoop. They're gone. Now we got just an extra minute, so I'll tell you what, slice up. Well, now I gotta watch this stuff pretty carefully. Slice up another potato like you did that one and give it to me. What do you mean slice up? Just, well, no, no, one of your, your skins. Oh, okay, just long yeah. lengthwise. Or do it crossways, either one. I'm in a lengthwise mode. I've kind of gotten used to the lengthwise cut. All right, now let me have them over here. And let's see if we can do them like this. I'm gonna fast fry some of them. There's just all sorts of things you can do with them. And I've got these right up under the broiler, so I gotta watch very carefully so I don't burn them. Let's bring up the, you ready to bring up the Yeah, recipe? let's do the. And uh, Dave's address. Let's bring those up right now. The potato crisps. Scoop the insides out of four large baked potatoes. Cut the remaining skins in one and a half inch strips. Brush with melted margarine. Sprinkle with salt and pepper and broil until crisp for about 10 minutes. And the daring dip is a a cup of low-fat cottage cheese, a cup of plain yogurt, half a teaspoon garlic powder, half a teaspoon onion salt, a dash of Tabasco, and to that you could add either a quarter of a cup of uh, 
crumbled fried bacon or chopped green onions and put them all together in a blender and you've got a, a fine, fine dip for everything. And we're frying these potato skins now. And I think that's gonna work just fine, Dr. Bly. Mm -hmm. Oh, these are coming along. Well, good. Got them now, right up under that broiler. Yeah. And to, to get them to crisp, they do need to be right under the broiler. Some people broil them and put them halfway down, they won't do. You gotta be brave and put them right up under there. But if you get them that close, you have to watch them very carefully. Because if you don't, you're liable to burn them. Now my potato skins are doing just fine. Maybe we ought to see what Ms. Witch has got for us today. <clears throat> Ms. who? Ms. Witch. Oh yeah, Ms. wonder where she is. Oh! <laughs> what, she Sound carrying like she a drop tambourine keys. today. <laughs> 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 hey, smart guys. You think you know everything about cooking. Well, here's one for you two big mouths. How about a pork souffle? <laughs> Put that in your trough and eat it. <laughs> big buck battle. Yazoo, Mississippi. Well, thanks, big I buck. I will personally do a pork souffle next you, week. You will? Yes. You're going to do a pork souffle. Pork souffle next week. Okay. Never been you done on this right program ahead. before. Doesn't even sound very good. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try to do something to go along with Well, them. I certainly hope so. How are they doing in there? Oh, they're just ah, languishing along in well, there. Now, if you can find me another plate, we'll uh, take some of these with us over to the uh, table and let me reach. Oh, we always throw the producer's mail away in the train. Never understand why. All right. Now let's lift these up. I'll put that uh, paper cloth here on on the plate. You so want to get some of the grease out of yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, <laughs> very good. Now, can you stamp out two plus two? <laughs> <laughs> He was doing the like staff clever is hands. Taking to give it a cues like this. <laughs> like a horse at the circus. All right. Mm hmm. Well, those are right smart, right pretty. Mm hmm. Very Look lovely. I can get them all over here onto the plate. And yeah. I think you need to put a little salt and pepper on them. All right. Just did, you, did you salt and pepper? No, I didn't. Just a little tiny bit because I know your health and everything. Now, let me get some pepper. Like myself, I know you enjoy pepper. Right, I do. I certainly do well, too. Well, Lord, you got enough on there to. Well, Clear yes, I wanted to make sure we had box. enough. I'm not ready to come over yet. I'm still well, waiting suit for you. Yourself. Let me come on over here and I'll put this stuff down. Oh, on. these are doing great. Are they almost ready? Yeah, I'm going to bring one of them over. Okay. I'm going to bring one of them over. Now, I'm afraid the other one's liable will burn up. Oh. Now, you could serve with <laughs> this some kind of a cheap drink. <laughs> He's good on that camera, yes. you know that? Gotten real good. Used to be couldn't move but a little bit. Now we're up to three or four. Now what am I supposed to do with that? Well, you can dip into it. With what? Your your potato. I'll do with my potato what I wanna. Mmm. Mm. Oh boy, this oh, they are good. Let me now let me get my potato in the dip. Mmm. Sort of limp. It hasn't had a chance to get real crispy yet. Oh, that's good. It will. Mm, oh, boy. Nice. I think we got a good one. Well, you come to our party and we'll all be at Dave's this week. That's right. His address will be coming up right at the end of the program. We'll see you.